Are you wondering how to be more eligible for scholarships? How students without the best GPAs can still achieve them? And what possible scholarship hacks, tricks, and tips exist? In this video, we're talking all about that, coming up. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. In this video, I asked my friend Justin Schaefer, Mr. Fascinate, and the founder of the Magic Cool Bus Project. Kids are more likely to do something when they see someone who looks like them doing it. That's where the Magic Cool Bus arrives. 3D printers, mini drones, and body fat percentage calculators. A whole bunch of scholarship questions because he has a lot of experience winning scholarships in his lifetime, and he can answer these questions really well. So without further ado, let's jump right into question number one. First of all, we would love to hear your background with accumulating scholarships. How many have you received and how much funding did that represent? What's up 1% engineers? Thanks for having me on the channel, Jake. So glad to be here. Congrats on all your success, man. Can't wait to see what you do in the future. To answer your question, I receive scholarships from NASA, NOAA, and NSF, or the National Science Foundation, uh, Hampton University, which is my alma mater, uh, to name a few. The funding I received in college totaled roughly $200,000, and that's including tuition, uh, apartment costs, free meals, room and board, also the cost of books, uh, and some of that was also grant money as well. Leave a comment below if you're striving to win some scholarships, and if you've won them in the past and have any tips for 1% Nation, make sure you leave a comment too. Question number two, Justin, what advice do you have for students that are seeking scholarships but may not have the highest GPA, may not have the highest standardized test scores? If your GPA is not that good, and if your test scores aren't that high, join some organizations. You have to beef up your resume. It's okay to have a 2.2 GPA as long as you can tell a story like, the reason I have a 2.2 GPA is because I was so busy building an organization that provided computer parts to students that were less fortunate. Because that way, your application will stand out as truly unique to the admissions team or the scholarship review team or whoever's looking at it. Regardless of how you choose to balance out your application, you must ensure that if you do have a low GPA that something on your application truly stands out as unique. And that way, the admissions team will absolutely see your scholarship application as one that is still exceptional. Question number three, how important is major choice when seeking scholarship funding? And specifically, Justin, what about for engineers and STEM majors, like the students in our communities? Major is extremely important, especially for those in engineering and in other STEM majors. And the reason why is because grant programs like Google, or federal grants like from the National Science Foundation or the Gates Millennial Scholars Program have thousands if not millions of dollars allocated to students. So that money is out there for you guys. Not to mention that internships should be paid too. All three of the internships that I had during my college experience were paid. So I encourage you guys to not settle for less than that. Question number four, what can students be doing right now to make them the most eligible for scholarships. So I advise three main things. The first is check out some scholarship application sites like Scholarly and FastWeb. They've got tons of available resources out there for you. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that. The second thing that I advise you guys to do is to make an outline of your personal statement and have someone that is an excellent writer review it. And then once you have the general outline of your personal statement, you can copy and paste that over and over again. No one's ever going to know that your personal statement to this program uh, was the same one that you put in for that program. The third thing I'd say is really put the time in. So I think a key time for a lot of college students to start applying for scholarship and internship opportunities is during winter break. So a lot of people that were and my friend group decided to do a minimum wage job when they were at college and uh, work a 40 hour week during winter break. And that's cool, right? So let's just say the average minimum wage is $10. That's a little bit generous, but let's just say it's $10. What if you work 40 hours a week and you make $10 an hour? So that's about $1,600 to $2,000. That's not too bad, right? But let's say you spend 20 hours a week uh, for four to five weeks working on internship applications. That's 80 to 100 hours in the course of your winter break, roughly. And let's say during that time you get an opportunity because you've copy and pasted a lot of this stuff to apply to roughly 30 scholarships. 
let's say you only get 10% of that. Let's say you only get three of those 30 scholarships. It's likely that the scholarships that you receive, especially if you're in a STEM program, will exceed $1,600 to $2,000. For half the amount of time that you put in for a minimum wage job, you can make up to twice as, as much money. So the, the, re, the return is, is excellent, especially if you decide to beef up your resume early on. So that's a huge deal. Bonus question, has receiving scholarship funding benefited you in your professional life, your life after college? Has it created a skill set that has better prepared you for real life? I absolutely feel like my professional career has benefited as a result of my scholarship hustling. I wouldn't be able to quit my job as early as I did to pursue my dream of becoming a science communicator if it weren't for the fact that I had stockpiled a little bit of savings on the side before I started my full-time job so that I had saved up enough very quickly to do what I wanted to do. Also, it's kind of cool not being super broke in college. Most people are. And finally, Justin, I heard that the Magic Cool Bus team is planning on doing a scholarship. Tell us more about that. We would love to hear the details. Basically, what applicants would be responsible for is making a short, entertaining explainer video about a science concept. And the more creative you are, the better. And so we're going to have roughly three awards totaling about $7,000 out there for you guys. So if you want to find more information about this, check out our website, fascinateside.com. We'll probably link that below for you. And uh, thank you again, Jake, for the opportunity. Glad to talk about this stuff. If any of you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at mr.fascinate, comment on my YouTube section, or uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn at Justin J. Schaefer. Hey, 1% Nation. I hope you enjoyed those scholarship tips from Justin Schaefer. If you did, consider subscribing because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. Thank you so much, Justin, and the entire Mr. Fascinate and Magic Cool Bus team. We love what you're doing and cannot wait till you come on your first tour. If you have a question about anything, leave a comment. Thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys. Check out another video, and as always, stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% Engineer. Cheers!